welcome back to another daily walk. Today I want to spend some time uh, on our daily walk talking about um, what is the mission of the Christian. Uh, I spent some time watching last few days again a documentary and I forget the uh, person who uh, made the documentary. I'll go ahead and link it down in the description down below. But it's a three hour documentary on the expose of the church growth movement and things that, that they're trying to do. And of course, Rick Warren is big into this and he has his whole peace plan where basically he wants to go around and spread world peace. And that sounds like a great and wonderful thing, but the problem is it's not biblical. Nothing he does is biblical. Nothing from his churches to his books to his plans. He has an entire book, one of the best-selling books of our, you know, of, of our era, that just supposedly a Christian book to teach us all about purpose and never one time mentions the gospel of Jesus Christ and what it is. Oh, there's a whole lot about nebulously loving Jesus and a whole lot of prayers about loving Jesus, but without the gospel, there's nothing. And what I wanted to look at today is kind of a, a section that if you are not saved, a section in Matthew that could be a little bit terrifying. And we are in Matthew chapter 10 as it regards to the peace plan. All right, so of course this entire peace plan, this entire peace project um, is, it is cross faith, it is cross everything. And before, I guess before we dive into this, it's not a bad thing if I want to stand side by side with somebody I don't believe with in their faith to alleviate some issue. That's okay, but it should be a secondary thing to our task of preaching the gospel because this world as we know it is going to pass away. Jesus tells us the poor will always be with us. We are never going to eliminate poverty. Guys, we have the ability to eliminate poverty. I think Jesus in, in his ultimate godly, omniscient wisdom knew the state and the human condition of man, which of course he did. We have the technology to end hunger and poverty, we just don't. <laughs> we push out thousands and thousands of food items day in and day out and they get trashed, thrown completely away because nobody bought them, because people can't afford. And we're not here to deal with that issue. That is a huge issue for another time. But what we want to talk about as Christians is our ultimate primary task is to recognize this world is going to pass away and there is a better world. And our task is to preach the gospel. What is the real gospel? The real gospel is that we acknowledge we are sinners. We are dead in our sins and our transgressions. And there is nothing we can do about that in the slightest. But God made a way that if we profess our sins or, or we, we confess that we are sinners before God and we accept his sacrifice, he gives us eternal life. And that is eternal life in this world that will pass away and we'll be recreated into a new life, a new world, a new creation, which is free from sin, free from death, free from poverty, free from all of this. That's our task of Christians is to preach the gospel. But the problem is the gospel is not something the world wants to hear because it goes so contrary to the ways of the world. And that's where our challenge is, is at. And so is there anything wrong with specifically going out and alleviating the problems of our cultures? And the answer is no. In fact, that is part of what our tasks are. Remember Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. Okay, that's kind of the important part is to recognize that we are saved to do good things. He tells us in another pa passage, and I can't remember the exact reference for this one, it's also in Matthew among other places, that as much as you did it unto these things, feeding people, clothing people, all these, you are doing it unto me. Of course, there's the famous section in James chapter two, which tells us that we have to get out and we have to demonstrate our faith by serving mankind. That is important. But that is takes the back seat to preaching the gospel. And that's what the, the purpose is. Now, that doesn't mean that we always go out. We're not like the culty guy that I knew at one point in time that if a homeless guy would come into him needing food or money, the man would make them pray a sinner's prayer before he'd give them anything. Well, that's coercion. That's not biblical Christianity. His task then should have been to feed the people and preach to them the gospel, not only in words, but in deeds and in actions. That is our task. 
but for those that want to utilize Christianity as a platform to, to welcome in all other faiths and say everyone can get into the kingdom of God. You know, there's the kingdom of God circle thing where you're like, you can say, you know, well, the, the, the Christians have the kingdom of God and the Christians tell the Muslims they have to convert to Christianity, get into the kingdom of God, and that's the only way in. And then the Muslims think the Christians have to convert to Islam to get up to the kingdom of God. And this teaching basically says, oh no, you gotta do away with this entire thing. Everybody can find God all on their own. This is how we start peace. But the problem is that is wrong. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father except through me, okay? There is no other way. There is no second path. There is no, I've just been a really good life and so I'm going to get up to heaven on my own. That's not the message of the gospel. The message of the gospel, there is one way, life through Jesus Christ. And the problem is Islam says Jesus Christ is just a prophet, not a God. And that's the problem. All right, but here we find this part here for people wanting to use Christianity as a platform for world peace, recognize this from directly the lips of Jesus in Matthew chapter 10. And we're going to start in verse 32, because I, th I, I mean, really the verse we're going to look at is in 34, but I want to start in verse 32. Therefore, everyone who confesses me before men, I will confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. And I think that the reason that is before the verse we're going to look at and focus most on, the reason that's in there is that we cannot deny our allegiance to Jesus Christ as a platform to say, I'm going to deny that it's not important so we can go and help world peace. Because he says in the very next verse, Matthew chapter 10, verse 34, Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring, bring peace, but a sword. For I came to set man against his father, and daughter against her mother, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be the members of his household. He who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And who, he who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who has found his life will lose it, and he who has lost his life for my sake will find it. Okay? Now, let's focus and look at this. I did not come to bring peace on the earth, but a sword. Okay? Because as we preach the gospel, he tells us, if they hate you, remember they hated me first. The gospel is offensive to the unbelieving, dying, perishing world. Remember, it is a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles, but it is the very simple, basic peace thing that we do. That's all Paul tells us. We have to preach the gospel. We don't have to have elegance in speech. We have to preach the gospel, preach truly what the Word of God says and believe it, whether we like it or not. I think R.C. Sprawl had a great thing going. He says, read a New Testament, underline everything you agree with in green, everything you disagree with in red, and then spend the rest of your life making those red marks green. Because if you disagree with something in this book, either you are wrong or God is wrong. Who do you think it is? That's very important. But he says then, I came to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. In other words, as the gospel is preached, we will believe under Christ. We will transform our lives. We will become sanctified. We will stop engaging in all of these crazy sinful activities. And then our family's going to think we've lost our ever-loving mind because we have this heart and this love and this soul to stop sinning. Walk no longer as the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, but their eyes were darkened. Darkened. That's not what we want to be. But Jesus says, I did not come to bring world peace. The gospel does not bring world peace, nor should it. But as we are sanctified believers living out Christ, it doesn't matter if you are a Christian or a Hindu or a Muslim, I'm going to stop and help you. That was the point of the Good Samaritan. All right. And the next section here, of course, he goes, uh, he who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves his son or daughter 
uh, more than me, is not worthy of me. Basically, if you're going to compromise your gospel for friends or family, you're not worthy of Jesus. And that's exactly what the church growth movement does, trying to usher in world peace by denying the gospel, not even preaching the gospel. We have to preach the gospel. And the gospel does not necessarily bring about world peace. It brings about division. It brings about a sword, which is very unfortunate, but it does. So thanks for coming along on this daily walk. Hopefully this was inspiring to you in some way or another. Take a look at the links in the description down below, how you can help support the channel. I have some books available. You can check out Testing and Temptations and Art of Shallow Neighboring. Uh, have a look at those. They should be available anywhere where you can uh, order a book from. So thanks for coming along and hope that you enjoy your daily walk in our Lord.